How's it going, AS Math? It's Mr. Knight bringing you a uh, look at some of these Cambridge problems. They can be a little tricky, um, so hopefully we've already got that note card down, and so we can now use it. Um, but I want to get you guys an idea on how these problems are going to work. Uh, so I chose problem six, so you guys don't have to do this problem. Um, you're going to just do one through five. But uh, I wanted to choose this one because this, this one's a doozy, and it's not obvious at all. But maybe after you see it, uh, it'll be a little bit easier for the other problems, okay? So number six is telling me the first term of an arithmetic progression is A, and the common difference is D, where D doesn't equal zero. So our first thing we got to do is write down expressions in terms of A and D for the fifth and the fifteenth terms, okay? So I'm using an arithmetic progression, and I'm looking for... Um, the terms of the arithmetic progression, right? So this is my equation I would use for the terms, the kth term in an arithmetic progression. So it wanted me to do the fifth and the fifteenth. So let's just do that real quick. Uh, u sub five equals, again, it's in terms of a and b, and I don't know what those are, but I do know what my k is. My k is five, so five minus one is four, d, and there's my uh, fifth term right there. And we could do the same thing with the 15th. We could do a plus 14d. And there we go. Not too shabby, right? Well, <laughs> the second part of this is saying now the first term, the fifth term, and the 15th term okay, of this arithmetic progression are the first three terms of a geometric progression. And then part two wants us to show that 3a equals 8d. All right, well, so we're going to need our geometric progression, like the, the kth term of that as well, for part two. So that would be u sub k equals, it was a r to the k minus one. And really, it it only told us, right, it only told us that the first, fifth, and fifteenth term of the ap are really just the first three terms of the gp. Well, we have the fifth and the fifteenth, and then we also know what the first one is, that's just equal to a, right? Um, so we might not actually need to use this guy that much. What, what comes in handy, though, is that it says um, that they're the first three terms of a geometric progression. So let's see. Let's just write that stuff down real quick. We know that u sub 1 now, now we're with geometric, is going to equal a, right, the first term of the arithmetic progression u sub 2 is going to equal the fifth term, which was a plus 4d. And the third is actually the 15th of the ap. So here's what we got to work with. We don't know what these terms are. We don't know what a is. We don't know what d is. And it looks like when we show this, we're still not going to know what a and d are. But since it's geometric, we do know that they have a common ratio, right? They're going to have a common ratio. And to find that, we do u sub 3 divided by u sub 2, and that should be the same as u sub 2 over u sub 1, right? You're taking that first term dividing by the previous. So if I plug some stuff in, and let's do that, this is what's going to happen. I get this guy. This is a proportion. So I don't want to work with fractions. I'm going to like fix this up, and I'm actually going to cross multiply. All right? Okay, so if we do that, we get, for this first one, we're going to get a squared plus 14ab, and that's going to equal, well, I could treat this like two binomials, and I'm going to FOIL them out, so I'd end up getting a squared plus 4ad plus 4ad, plus 16d squared. All right? Now, looking at this, the a squareds, if I subtract both sides by a squared, it's going to cancel. And so I'm left with 14ad equals this guy over here. And in fact, I can combine like terms right here. I could subtract the 8ad over. So I get 6ad equals 16d squared. I can keep going. I can divide both sides by D. So it's really a lot of algebra that's going on. 
I'm left with 1D over here, and now I, uh, 6 and 16, I can divide both sides by 2. Uh, well, actually, this goes to 3. It doesn't just cancel out. This goes to 8. So I'm left with 3A equals 8D, and that's what we were trying to show, which is kind of wild that we were able to actually get that. Um, but just knowing, just knowing that, hey, my common ratios, I know the same way to get them every single time, and they're geometric now, that's going to come in handy. Really, sometimes it's about taking a shot in the dark, and I did that uh, before showing you this problem. Okay, um, Part 3 now. It's saying, find the common ratio of the geometric progression. So now we're actually going to find it, and on all of your problems, I give you the answer so you can check them. So we should get 2.5 for this. But let's see how to do that. So for finding the common ratio, again, we know that these guys are going to be equal to each other. We do know that. Um, we also now have something like this, sorry, like this, where we can turn it into something like this. If I divide both sides by 3, I can get A equals 8 thirds D, and that's what my A equals. So now, I'm just going to take one of these guys, probably this guy right here, the U2 divided by the U1, and I'm going to plug this guy in for my A. So I only have everything in terms of D. Okay. Let's do that. So 8 thirds D plus 4D over 8 thirds D. Let's uh, combine like terms up top. I'm going to make this um, into 12 thirds. So this would be on top. We're going to get 20 thirds D divided by 8 thirds D. And I want to make something very clear here. This D, when it's next to it like that, it's implied it's up top. Why is that important? You're going to see in a little bit. It's because now, well, if I'm dividing fractions, uh, that's just doing the opposite, or just doing the reciprocal, multiplying by the reciprocal. So this turns into 20D over 3 times, well, this as a reciprocal would be 3 over 8D. And so now, because I wrote the D like that, I can clearly see it's in the bottom now. And what's going to happen? These guys, the Ds will cancel. The 3s will go to 1. And I'm left with 20 over 8. And if I reduce that further, then I'm going to end up getting uh, 10 over 4, which can reduce to 5 over 2. And that's my common ratio right there. On here, it said it was 2.5. That's five halves right there, okay? So, a lot of it is using your resources, figuring out what you got to do, what the problem is asking you to do, and then sometimes just taking a shot in the dark, right? Um, this is the hardest problem, for sure. So I, I, I went over it so it can help you guys out on the other problems, which aren't easy, but they're not as tough, okay? Uh, good luck. You're going to be working with your groups. I think you guys are going to do great and I'll be walking around helping.